What's up guys, Captain Ross here, East Allen Aquatics, and this is my outdoor pond for the summer of 2K18. Now summer is pretty much over as far as school-wise, people are going back to school, but I want to show you a little bit of what I've been doing over the summer outside. So as you guys know, the past couple years I've been doing a little tub pond and it's getting been getting bigger and bigger. Started with a little 20 gallon tote, you know, moved on to two 20 gallon totes, and now I've got this giant probably close to 50 something gallon trash can old trash can that is filled with water and now has fish and plants in it so over the summer I've been breeding stuff in here and it's been going very well to say the least but I want to give you guys a quick look into that into the feeding I've been doing and kinda of just an analysis of this stuff and how you can do this next summer so I love to do tub ponds in the summer because you can take great advantage of the heat causing all these different organisms to feed on different algae that grow in your pond. So generally green water is really good. Be and generally green water is what you're going to be end up ending up getting because a lot of times ponds are not filtered and stuff, your little tub ponds. Now I filter mine and because of the plant load in here, the water is actually fairly clean, well clear, if you can tell just by looking around, it's fairly clear. But towards the beginning of the summer, before I had all this plant growth in here, it was green water. And green water gives all the nutrients and little microorganisms that your fry need to grow. And grow strong and eat the live foods and stuff. So you got um, Daphnia and other things like that, your copod type stuff in fresh water. Now in here I have Montezuma swordtails, Heterandra formosa, which are least killifish and dwarf panda guppies which are really it's like a smaller variety of guppy that has a fluorescent blue with black it's like a bluish white in the black it's really pretty it'll look great in a tank once I get these out of here um, I haven't seen any of the sword tails I got them as fry so I don't know how how well they did but I'm seeing a lot of formosas which is obvious because I've been doing formosas the past two years out in the ponds and they've done very well and the guppies hang out underneath. So first let's get into filtration. So for me, I use, if you've ever seen a magnum filter, it's like a magnum canister. They come with this thing that looks like an oil filter in there. And I use that as a filter, as like a sponge filter. So I hook that up and I throw a pot scrubby in the bottom. I smash it in the bottom to give it a bottom instead of it just going all the way through. And then I hook the top of a sponge filter into it. So I'm going to pull it out. It's going to disperse some crap in the water, obviously. But I want to at least show you what it is I'm talking about. So it's got like the little filter filtration thing here. And then it's like a sponge filter on top. So yeah, that got stuff all over the place. But at least you got to see that. And that collects a lot of stuff through the suction. And then here, I just have a little sponge filter with al with uh, Java Moss connected and Java Fern. And that'll actually clear up pretty quick. So how do we do water changes? Water changes kind of happen naturally in these ponds. A lot of times you'll, you'll put a little drain in the side and then let the water flow. Bring the water level up, go out the drain and be done. Now for this one, I actually haven't done a whole lot of water changes, but I've had top offs from the rain just happen naturally. And that just, gives the fish a good turnover once the water um, gets hit by the rain and things like that. So it just kind of cleans it all out itself. It actually does a very good job. But in the past I have put little drainage holes and as the water's come up, it's overflowed out of the, out of the drain and kind of done the water changes on its own. So over here, as far as plants, I have like a hygrophilia type thing and it's becoming its immersed form in the top. And then along the sides, you can see it's submerged form. Then I have some Japonica. Or, ja or I guess it's Japanese Rush. That has actually turned red. I think it's due to all the sunlight and nutrient in this. Um, it's generally green in a tank. And then I have a red lily bulb right here. 
So you can put plants in here that generally would need a lot more sunlight because you're getting it a lot more. Now, I put my play, mine in an area where I have this little awning here to block off the sun for part of the day. Little one up there to block for the rest and it's right in this corner right next to the faucet and a door where I can come out. So the good thing about that is it only gets sunlight for part of the day because it only gets it from like I'd say like 11.30 to maybe 3.30 sometimes 4 because just when the sun is right overhead or at an angle but it only gets it full sun around 12 to 2 which is good because if you have it just like sitting out in the middle of your yard it's going to be getting sun a lot more because it's like that whole area but this time the sun has to get over my house to the point where it's not under the awning and then after it dips along the other side then it's not getting sun anymore and that's a great way to have it so that your uh, place is it's not getting way too hot and having a deeper system makes the bottom cooler so if the fish need to retreat to cooler water they can go down and that's why I like to put a lot of plants up on top because that kind of shields it so that they can go down into the shade it's important to have shade for your fish otherwise they're just going to be baking out in the sun now I'll bring this pond in when it's when we have like our first you know, when it starts to get down to like low 60s nights, I'll bring it in because I don't want any of the fry to die. When it gets down to like 50s, 30, when it gets to like 40s and stuff, 30 obviously, that would not be good. But a lot of the fry like to hide in this hygrophilia, so I definitely recommend that. Some sort of little bushy plant you throw up on the top and it just floats in mats. And that's where a lot of the bugs and uh, microorganisms like to be. Make sure you have some area in your pond where there's no surface like tension or not tension where there's no surface movement so like over here because of this bushy plant there's no movement on the surface and that way mosquitoes can lay their larva there have their larva lay their eggs there and have their larva go that sounds bad like oh no mosquitoes in the yard they're gonna come out and bite you but no they're not gonna make it because your fish are going to be eating the larva as soon as they come out and that's good for them now if your whole thing was stagnant and you have a ton of larva going in, then that might be a little bit of an issue. But for me, I've got the surface moving everywhere except for in this corner over here. So that's the only place the mosquitoes can lay their eggs. So that's a good little tactic. So I will definitely be showing you guys more of these fish as soon as I get them out of here. And you can see the colors and see how they've done. But first, let's kind of talk about food before we go. So I have been feeding exclusively cobalt aquatics food which as you know in the past from my videos it's like your steak dinner with a little bit, bit of asparagus thrown in on the side they have their blue flakes their probiotic flakes amongst the steak dinner of your normal flakes so they're throwing in these these flakes that may not taste as good but they're throwing but are better for your fish they throw them in with the really palatable flakes all together fish don't know the difference and they're getting the vitamins and nutrients that normally if a, a whole flake if a whole container had only that kind they wouldn't want anything to do with it but by mixing it all in fish don't know the difference and they're getting these probiotics in their systems to help with waste and things like that in their digestive system so here we have a new thing that cobalt is releasing it's these ultra pellet foods so they have multiple kinds they have like a tropical and a marine and all this stuff but I, for this one, I'm just using the guppy one, which really is for any live bears. It's floating 0.6 millimeter. They're nano. They're super small. So if you've ever used, like, uh, the, uh, I forget, Hikari has a fry food that I like a lot. It's like a powder. This is, like, the next step up from that. So as your fry get a little bigger, they'll be able to eat these. It's almost to the powdery part. It's, like, so small that it's almost a powder and you just take it and you can just sprinkle it on top and because it's floating some of them you'll want to like touch and get them down into the water so that they'll go down farther but this has been doing very well producing good color I'm really excited to see how the fish are when they're done um, the main source in here are prawns and dried spirulina algae and like jumbo squid meal and stuff so they get that carnivorous give them their carnivorous taste in there and then they also throw in that spirulina because we all know spirulina is very good for fish 
So before this video gets too long, I'm going to cut it off, but ask me any questions you have about these fish, tub ponds, cobalt food, let me know. And remember, I have a 25% off coupon code for cobalt food or any cobalt things. It's cobalt25. I'll have it in the description of the video. Use that coupon code, get you some cobalt stuff, and let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.